Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Charlotte. Today we are talking about low carb freezer meals and I'm just going to be completely honest with you and tell you that I am more of a high carb kind of girl. I also am a high carb kind of girl and that's okay, but there are needs for low carb meals. Yes. And these are all delicious. We still eat these. Absolutely. We'll just totally throw some carbs in there. And we do have a really, really popular keto freezer meal video. And so I know that there are those of you mm -hmm. that need this. My husband is off and on keto, which is why we do have quite a lot of low carb and keto options in our Freezer Meals 101 Club as far as recipes go. But we hear from you guys, and I know that some of you have some dietary needs and you need to eat low carb. So yep. this video is just especially for you. That's right. So we're gonna jump right in to this first recipe that we've got for you guys. This is carne dressada. Now, I know it sounds really exotic and everything, but carne like means meat and dressada means sauce I don't know what it means but it, <laughs> but it's like a stew it is really it is really uh, it's a Mexican stew it is a really nice flavorful really great meal when you said that I totally thought you had, I, you yeah, had looked I, up. <laughs> I did tons of research before I did this no I do know that carne means yes beef. that like I it's, know. Yes. it's meat chili con carne is yeah you know beef chili with beef so we start out with some stew meat so it's starting to look pretty stewy already we're going to add in some finely chopped serrano peppers. We're going to add in some garlic and tomato paste and some beef broth and some water. And we're going to put the cornstarch right in. Also with chili powder, cumin, and some salt and pepper. We're going to add this all right into the bag. We're going to squish it around and then we're going to remove the excess air in the bag and seal it up and then freeze it. Now on the day of cooking, you're going to thaw this and just throw it right into your slow cooker. You want to cook it on low for four to six hours. And here is where it is no longer carby because we're going to put it over rice or fold it right into tortillas. Or if you're looking for a low carb option, you can use cauliflower rice. That is a great low carb option. Good job. Now, sometimes when we do meals like this, we will put the cornstarch in during the cooking mm -hmm. because it uh, just sometimes will separate, but this one we find it doesn't. It's okay to put the cornstarch in, but if you want to leave it out and put it in later, that is up to you. And it's really just two teaspoons. It's not going to put you over your limit for carbs for the day either. I really like this next one because it is a vegetarian low carb freezer meal. And I know that sometimes when people think low carb, they think it has to be like meat, meat, meat all the time. But this one is low carb and vegetarian. So this is our paneer curry. Paneer is a cheese. It's made with milk whey and it is sort of like the texture of tofu, like a like a, a firm tofu, but it is a milk product. And you would find it with your cheese at your grocery store and we cube it up. So you can, mm -hmm. you can peel it open like a block of cheese and cube it up and then we fry it. So we'll get to that. So for this, you're gonna take your paneer and like Christy said, you're just gonna cube it into one inch pieces then you're gonna heat it on medium high in a skillet in some butter. You can season it with some salt and pepper as you do this. You don't wanna overcrowd your pan. So we usually do this in batches when we do it and you're just gonna cook it for six to seven minutes. You're gonna make sure that you turn it often so that you sort of sear all the sides. You're just looking to get that really nice texture on this. You're gonna pat that with a paper towel afterwards to get rid of the extra butter. And then into a large freezer bag, you're gonna put your paneer, some diced tomatoes, frozen peas, chopped onion, ginger. Now we like to use the squeezy tube ginger because it tastes really fresh, but you don't have to mince it yourself. And then we're gonna add some minced garlic. And for that, we like to use, we're all about making things easy and fast here. So we like to use the pre-minced garlic from a jar. 
and two tablespoons of curry paste. Now for the curry paste, you can do a spicy curry paste or a mild curry paste. So you can really adjust this recipe according to your spice taste. And then you're gonna add in some cilantro and some more salt and pepper and Greek yogurt. On the day that you go to serve this, you're just gonna heat it in your skillet. And then you're gonna add a bit more yogurt and if you want, you can also top it with some fresh cilantro. This is one that traditionally you would have with naan bread or rice, but if you're cutting out those carbs, then you could again serve this on cauliflower rice, or I don't know if there's like a low carb naan, but if there is, give that a try. <laughs> I think this would also be something that would be good on like zucchini noodles oh, or yeah. like in a spaghetti squash mm -hmm. because it is so saucy and... It has a really good sauce. I just want to pause for our recipes for a second here because <clears throat> we have exciting Drum news. Roll, please. We are doing another one of our mega freezer meal marathons. <laughs> And I know that some of you wait in eager anticipation for those videos. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that that is coming. Mm -hmm. We Soon. have our list of recipes all chosen. Mm -hmm. Like this list, if I do say so myself. It's a fantastic list. So good. Mm -hmm. I am super excited. We're trying probably more new recipes than we've ever, ever made in a mega session. That is exciting. That is exciting. Like, we like that for ourselves, but we yeah. also like it that when they work out, we pass them along to you. They and end up yes. in our club. They end up on the website. So we can firmly tell you with enthusiasm <laughs> that these are good recipes because we don't like to put ones up there. We're only so-so about. Yeah, and we, mm -hmm. that's a great opportunity because we're making so many different meals. Mm -hmm. And because we do four of each or more, but at minimum of four of each recipe, so that Christy can take two home to her family and I can keep two for my family, the nice part about that is if it's a new recipe and the first one is sort of like, eh, so so, then we can play around with that second one. Mm -hmm. And last mega session that we had, we had this seafood creole that we tried. That's right. And it was, it just kind of fell flat. And I was thinking, we're thinking about ways to zip it up or to make it, you know, give it more layers of flavor. Cause it just kind of seemed sort of, it, it sounded exciting, but it just kind of meh. Yeah. And so this is one that we haven't passed along, but we did talk about different ways to zip it up. And when we made the second one, it was much better. Because you added some Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce and mm -hmm. what else did you add? I forget. Sardines. Oh! <laughs> because to me it wasn't seafoody enough. Um, it was, and I mean, it was seafoody. There was, what did we have? Scallops, shrimp, and imitation crab. Yeah. And just when I was eating it, I just kind of felt like it could be more seafoody, and Maybe so it's one that we need to try like mussels. And we had talked about if we left the if you leave the shells on the shrimp, yes. that helps flavor things. And yes. we had bought shellless like there was no tails on the shrimp, so things like that. So it is worth trying again. The other thing that we do for you and for us is we freezer mealize it. Is that a real word? We. <laughs> We're making it a word. <laughs> you know, there's lots of recipes out there that really aren't suitable to be put in the freezer. And so we figure out how to do that so that we know that it works before it ever gets to you. Yeah, and those mega sessions are the perfect time to try out new mm -hmm. recipes. And we're very above board with you in saying, we're not sure. <laughs> we're not sure, or this sounds terrible. So there are, yeah, yeah, we we do it for you so you don't have to. And that paneer curry recipe that I shared with you <laughs> is one that we had made in a mega session. Mm -hmm. It was like I think you invented it too. Yeah. yeah, I was like, paneer was on sale and I was like, I am determined to figure out what we can do with paneer because I really like it if I go to a restaurant. And then we went to make it again. I forgot to write it down, and so I had to reinvent the whole thing. We went. She went back and watched the video, and she's like, "I think that's too much." And <laughs> no, it was. It, it, so maybe it's even better than the first time. I don't. 
it is good it is really good so join us for that mega session oh because we're gonna warn you it's gonna be they're like two hours long <laughs> so you just want to get comfy and you want to maybe get some tea and some pajamas put your pajamas <laughs> on and make yourself some popcorn <laughs> there is a lot going on but we really do we cover a lot of territory there's a great amount of variety and we have fun doing it it's, it's hard work we take fun. two days and we knock it down to two hours for you um, but it's really, really good. We enjoy it a lot. <laughs> okay, the next, next recipe one. is... Oh, this is a really good this summer one. This is a really great summer one. This is sweet chili chicken skewers. So we start out with our soaking of the skewers because you want that. Otherwise, they're going to burn if you're using the wooden ones. We're going to have three chicken breasts that we're going to cube into nice, big, chunky one-inch pieces. We are going to mix together in a bowl the sweet Thai chili sauce some pineapple juice, some melted honey. We're gonna add in some red pepper flakes, which are optional, but I recommend them. And we're gonna mix that all together. We're gonna take a quarter cup of that sauce and put it in a medium-sized freezer bag so that when you go to cook with it, you can brush it on and it's there for you already. The rest we're gonna put on the chicken right now. So we're gonna thread our skewers with the chicken. We're gonna brush it with the sauce. And then here's the smart part. We're gonna put it on parchment paper on a baking sheet, freeze these individually. And then once they're frozen, we transfer them into a foil tray and then cover it with our plastic wrap or our, and our foil and add our bag of the sauce. So that when you go to cook these, now you can cook them from frozen, you can do them in your oven or in your barbecue, you want a nice hot oven, um, you can do them on a baking sheet or right in your grill, or you can take them camping and you can do them on the campfire. I literally did these on the campfire totally last can. year. This is awesome. And they are delicious. They're always a hit. And, you know, throw together some vegetable skewers to go with it and bam, you have yourself a full meal, which is also, even with the vegetable skewers, is going to be pretty low carb and delicious. This Madras curry chicken it sounds a little bit weird. Like some of the things in here mm, sound a little Madras odd. Madras curry probably isn't in everybody's vocabulary. Right. I, I had never even heard of it before I met Sharla, and now I eat it. <laughs> I do love all curries, really. And but I didn't think I liked curry at all. I was very picky about, like, if it was curry, and I'm like, I don't know, curry. But I did like butter chicken, which is curry. Mm -hmm. you did, did you know that? That a butter chicken is a kind of curry? And so I started opening up to it. I and opened now, her mind. I, sh I opened, I had a mindset shift <laughs> and I do like curry now and I still like a mild curry more than a spicy one or a really heavy one but oh yeah I will go for some Indian food any day. And I think in Christy's case it had a lot to do with you don't like coconut milk. I don't and like coconut anything. And so a lot of curry dishes tend to be cooked with coconut milk. Mm -hmm. But when I convinced you that... We could try. We could. I will try it. I will try it. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. And the coconut milk, even if it has coconut milk in it, a lot of times it ends up being very mild. It just, it isn't something that I can easily pick out. So mm -hmm. I... Think it's okay so i yeah yeah i like curry now i don't tell people i like coconut milk but if it's in there i don't get it as, as long as it's not too strong so for this madras curry chicken one of the things that i think is great about this is that you actually pre-cook the chicken so you're gonna cube and cook your chicken i actually do it in a reverse order i cook it and then cube it but whatever you want to do is fine the reason that I like that aspect of this meal is it's such a fast mm -hmm. reheat. And also, this is a great one if you live on your own and you're making individual freezer meals. It divides nicely. Divides beautifully. And a little bit ago, we did meals for one of my sons that moved away for the summer. And we did 48 individual meals for him. I'm going to put a video up there. And we did this one and we did it in a microwave safe containers with some rice and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And it's just a perfect one 
for dividing up because the chicken's already done and you really can just reheat in the microwave or in the skillet. In your bag, you're gonna put that cubed cooked chicken and some onion, garlic. Again, we're just using the jarred garlic and then that squeezy tube of ginger again. Then you're gonna add some chicken broth, Madras curry paste, and here's the where I might lose some of you, but it's good, is mincemeat. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add in some mincemeat, which is usually a baking ingredient, but it is delicious in here. And you're gonna place all of that in your bag. You're gonna squish it around to combine all those flavors, remove the excess air, because when you're freezer cooking, it's really important to get the air out of your bag so that you don't get freezer burn. And then you're gonna freeze it. One, the day you go to cook this, you just thaw it and reheat it in a skillet. You're just waiting for that onion to soften a little bit so this cooks up so, so fast. If you want, you can top this with fresh cilantro. Again, you could heat it in the microwave as well. Um, and you could serve this over cauliflower rice. And I would have real rice. Yeah, I, you know, again, we are not the low carb people, so, but when- I would find a way to stick a carb in there. When my husband is doing his keto here and there, then we have cauliflower rice for him, and we have real rice for the rest of the family, and then we can totally adapt these kind of recipes. That's right, because freezer meals are for everybody. They are. You can, you can really customize, and that is one of the best things about freezer meals for sure. This last recipe is pizza soup. We did this in our last mega session. For the first time, was it in the mega session? I don't think it was in the mega session. I think we were doing like kid-friendly meals. Maybe, that's right. And you invented this. Yeah. Well, because we have a lasagna soup. Which is so, so good. But pizza, it's like if you want to get kids to eat anything, you just call it pizza something. <laughs> We've got that's like true. pizza casserole, pizza soup, pizza Pizza buns. tater tot casserole, <laughs> pizza ca oh, other pizza casserole, yes. Uh, pizza pinwheels. Pin <laughs> We've got pizza everything. In our bag, we are going to start out with our uh, about four ounces of sliced pepperoni. Um, so sometimes you can get the big chunk of it and slice it yourself, or you can buy it already sliced and then maybe quarter it up a little bit so it's a little bit smaller. Alternatively, I would maybe try this with ground sausage because mm -hmm. um, for me, I found the texture of the pepperoni a little weird when it was wet. Totally agree. I would also do this with ground sausage. You will then add in some bacon that is cooked and crumbled, which makes everything taste better. We're gonna add in some garlic, again from that jar, some minced onion, some green pepper, and some red sauce, which we make ourselves, and it's really, really fantastic. But if you don't have red sauce, you could just use your pizza sauce that you like. We're gonna also add in some oregano and some pepper, and of course it's a soup, so we're gonna add some broth. And in a medium-sized freezer bag, we're going to add a cup of mozzarella cheese that's been shredded, and we're going to staple those two bags together. We're going to remove all of the excess air. So we're going to staple those two bags together. We want to make sure we do it above the seal, so then we're not poking holes in the important part of the bag. So then on the day that you go to cook this, you're going to want to thaw it. I prefer to thaw all my freezer meals. We're gonna get it into either a slow cooker or right onto the stove. It's gonna heat up really fast. Let it simmer, let that onion soften, let those flavors meld. And then when you go to serve it, you're just gonna sprinkle some of that mozzarella cheese right on and you can add some croutons because then it feels like there's crust, right? So then you have the whole pizza experience happening right in your bowl. And there's absolutely low carb options to make your croutons because you've got your gluten-free breads, your low-carb breads, your all those kinds of things. So, or you just skip it. Totally. We really hope that you join us for our upcoming mega session that is happening. You will see it soon. So maybe click that little bell down there because when it comes up, you'll get a ding on your phone or on your computer and you'll be like, oh, the mega session's here. <laughs> and then you can go put on your jammies and join us for a couple of hours of some good wholesome family time. And we will have low-carb options as well we always do we always and do so there will be some recipes if you're looking specifically for low carb that work for you but really it's just a lot of fun so we do invite you to join us for that that's right 
We're gonna put a video right there that is all keto recipes. Mm -hmm. So they are obviously extra low carb. And so if you're looking for more ideas, you can check that out. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Happy cooking.